Hello YouTube, today's video is about off the grid survival. Now, the first thing I'm gonna start off here with is this little Zippo lighter. Now, most of you guys probably stock up on butane lighters and butane cans, but I keep one of these around just for emergencies. Uh, right now it's filled with Zippo lighter fluid, but there are also a lot of fluids that you could use as substitutes. Now, some of those you may or may not uh, want to use, um, just because you may be able to buy Zippo fluid cheap enough. I mean, this thing here, uh, when it was purchased, was $1.33. And I've had this thing for years, and it still works. And I think there's, like, naps that, that you can buy by the gallon that's pretty much the same thing. And it's probably just as cheap. But in an emergency situation, you could use other things, like, um, you know, if you had to, you could use oil. I don't know how efficient it would be. Um, but you could also use gasoline and all kinds of other stuff, um, alcohol and whatnot, that would technically work. So there's a lot of different options out there for it. And I just like to have it because it is so versatile. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is drills. Now, I know most of you probably have a drill like this that's, uh, you know, cordless. It has a battery built into it. But what if you guys have no power and the battery runs out of juice? Um, that is not an option for off-the-grid survival. So I wanted to show you guys this little thing I've got here. It is a hand drill. Um, now it is a little bit older and it still is completely functional. It has the ability to have multiple size drill bits. This one just happens to be uh, gigantic, but it's really simple to operate. You put your bit in and you just simply use your own strength to turn the drill. Um, now I'm not really going to try to drill through this desk here, but you can see just setting it on here and turning it a little bit um, puts a nice little mark on my desk. Um, so it runs on human power, so as long as you're alive and able to turn the little drill handle, um, it's definitely a renewable source that you don't have to worry about charging up and it's pretty much ready to go whenever you are. So I think that this is a great addition to any off-the-grid survival kit. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is saws. Now, this is a little coping saw here, and uh, in a survival situation, it could come in handy. Um, but let's say it's middle of winter and you need to go get some wood. You're going to need something a little more like this, so you can cut down trees and branches and cut it up into little nice pieces so you can bring it inside and hopefully burn it in your fireplace or fire pit or whatever you're doing. Now, this is a really good saw. It's very rough cutting, and it could be great for trees and branches. Now, if you want to do finished style work, like carpentry or something like that, you're going to want a saw like this. You can see that the teeth are a little bit smaller and closer together, and it makes a uh, lot smoother pattern um, when you're cutting. So it's more for finished style work. The smaller one over there with the bigger teeth is good for rough work, um, where you don't care what it looks like, but... The other one is for finish work. So um, I always have multiple sizes, including hacksaws, because you never really know what you're going to need. But all of these are great off-the-grid survival tools. The next thing I want to talk about is hammers and leverage. Now, pretty much everyone in their home has probably one or more hammers. Now, they're great for hammering in nails and taking out nails and some other rough tasks like that. But there comes a time where you may need something a little bit bigger than a hammer. Um, let's say you just cut down some wood and you need to cut it up into little quarters so you can fit it into your fireplace better. Well, that's when you're going to need one of these bad boys. Just your standard run-of-the-mill axe. Um, I've had this one for a while. It's been through some use. Um, but it still is fully functional. Now, an axe is an essential because not only can you use it for quartering up wood, um, you could also use it if you needed the back end of it to use as a sledgehammer to you know, break down a door or wall or window or something like that. Um, and it's, it could be very useful. Um, there's a lot of different things that you could use it for, and it's just a very versatile tool that I would recommend that everyone have. Um, now, I do have something else that I want to show you guys, and it's it's not really a necessity, but I had it um, given to me, and this is an old World War II trench axe. Now, you can see it's got the little flat end at one side, and it's got the little point at the other, so technically you could use this for digging and scavenging, 
or breaking um, you know, windows if you had to rescue someone out of a car, or you could even use it for self-defense. Um, that point is very dangerous, but again, it's just another useful tool that would be useful to have for off-the-grid living. And while we're on that subject, everyone needs one of these as well. Uh, this is just your standard crowbar, and they are nice and heavy, and they can provide a lot of leverage, whether you're trying to break off some boards or, you know, whatever you're trying to do. Now, a lot of people have that style there, the thin little bars, and those are great, but these have the extra length that'll give you that extra leverage that you need for, you know, whatever situation you're trying to um, accomplish. The next thing I think everyone should have is one of these. This is just a standard clamp, and all you do is you open and close it by turning the little bar at one end. Now, this has so many uses that it's you know not even funny. Um, there's so many little projects that you could be working on uh, that would require you to hold something in place while you work on it with another hand. So whether you're doing something to one of your firearms or you're sharpening something or you just need to hold something in place while you cut it or sand it or file it or whatever it is, it can come in extremely handy for so many purposes that, you know, it's one of those things that I make sure I've actually got two of them myself, just in case one breaks. It's, it's that handy and useful. Next up, I have this special little grinding wheel. This is something else that's very useful and can be used for many different applications. It is hand powered with a little crank at one end and it clamps right down to your desk. Whoops. Um, it just, all you have to do is bolt it to your desk with the little uh, screw on the bottom and then it'll grind whatever you need. You could sharpen sticks, you could sharpen metal, you could use it to touch up your axes, um, there's, you could sharpen your knife with it. I mean, there's so many different applications, and it just makes grinding stuff down very easily. I mean, all you have to do is use one hand to power it, and then you use your other hand to hold on to whatever you're grinding with it. So it's just, there's so many applications for this thing, and I got this from an old family friend, but, um, you know, I'm sure if you did some research, you could probably find something similar. But this is a great tool to have, and it requires no electricity or fuel or anything like that. All right, this next thing I have here isn't really a tool, but it's something that I keep on hand, and I usually keep a little bit of, I'm not even sure if they make the same brand anymore, but this is a hand cleaner. And this stuff is amazing. If you're covered in grease and grime and all kinds of stuff like that, it works wonders. Um, the other day I was doing some staining, and I was using gel stain, and I've got, I had it all over my hands, and this stuff just took it completely out. Um, I don't think I can get this to focus in on the ingredients, uh, but anyways, this stuff works wonders. It's great to have around. You may not always have running water to clean the grease and stuff off your hands, so a little bit of that stuff goes a long way. Last but not least, I have just a uh, standard oil lantern. Um, now this is an older one, and I'm sh I know you can still buy these things to date, but all you have to do is you put oil in this little cap here, you take it off, pour the oil in, and then you adjust the wick with this little handle here, and it runs completely off oil, um, usually lamp oil, but again, you could use this for um, different types of oil, vegetable oil, you know, whatever you have laying around, and it just, it comes in so handy because you can always find alternative fuels. Um, so it's just one of those things that you know makes a great off-the-grid survival item. As you can see here, it definitely gives off a ton of light, so it's very handy and can be useful for power outages, and you can even adjust a flame to make it brighter or dimmer. Um, but it's hard to tell here, but I can actually see very clearly everything around here. So this is a great item to have. Um, all you have to do to put it out is just lift the little flap up and blow and and now it's ready to use again later on. So uh, I hope this video helps you guys, gives you some cool ideas for stuff that you could use in the future. Um, it's definitely handy to have these things before you need them. And I just like them all because they really don't take fuel other than the lantern but um, and the Zippo lighter. But those are all renewable sources anyways. So um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any other suggestions and stuff that I could add to this. And I will see you soon with another video. If you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe and click that like button. And I will see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.